Yo, what's good, everybody? I want to welcome y'all back to another episode of the No Level Cap Podcast. I want to introduce everybody to the crew. We've got the Black Daredevil and the best actor in Austin, Texas, Terrence Flowers. What's going on, Terrence? Yo, what's going on, everyone? This weekend, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's pretty hectic. You know, we have Evo going on, and man, there's a lot of good top eights and everything. But, you know, we're here tonight bringing you all the content, bringing the content to the people. So, you know, you can't say that we don't do anything for you. But but in all hey. serious, no, it's 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 good to be here and yeah, get into this topic about summer anime. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we're a little late, but we we gonna get into it and it's gonna be right. That's why I wanted to wait. And uh we also got the living cartoon and the man with the golden voice, Rakeem Beck. What's going on, Rakeem? Hey man, I'm just here, ready to talk about some anime, talk with my boys, have a good time on this podcast, and I hope the viewers enjoy themselves as well. Let's hey, get it. that's that's what I want to hear. Uh I am Sage Ashford. Uh, I am the man that won't shut up, and this is uh, obviously the No Level Cap podcast where we talk about all the anime, all the gaming, all the geek culture, and none of the bullshit. Uh, we are back with episode 21, I believe. Yeah, 20, no wow. level cap. No, no, goes, 22. 22. Let's go. Let's go. 22. I love y'all. Uh, <laughs> if you pr if we're, No Level Cap goes live every Monday. If you prefer the video version, we're on YouTube. If you're a fan of the audio, we're live on Spotify, and we put up bite-sized clips of our podcast on TikTok. Now I want to get into it, like. We're a bit late on this one because I wanted to save, like, there was a show that I really wanted to watch, and for whatever reason, they shoved it at the back half of July, like, July 31st, I believe. And I was like, yeah? yeah like, seriously, because we put, we had, we were, we were going to do this topic literally, like, last week. And I just, I looked and I was like, man, I just really want to talk about this show. And so, like, we, we kicked it kick the can down the road i thought last episode was really good so i mean it was still worth it but i mean you know now we we've got to get into the summer anime and i wanted to jump in i wanted to get a snapshot of the summer summer anime season so the first thing i want to do is ask y'all what did you watch like i don't need to know what you thought of it uh you know we, we'll get to that but like what all did you watch rakeem what did you watch uh so the summer anime season i gotta catch uh ruby ice queendom uh, I watched Futo Pa, which is the the anime adaptation of the Common Rider Double. Mm -hmm. I watched Black Summoner, and I watched uh, Shine On Bakuretsu Bad Boys. That last one, uh, I don't even is... know. I know nothing about that last one. <laughs> I do because uh, I actually watched him with him. Like he had it up, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Uh, Terrence, what did you watch? Like, what all shows? What all the shows did you watch? I actually watched a lot more than I thought I did. Uh, Classroom of the Elite season two. Call of the Night, My Stepmom's Daughter is My Ex. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Rent a Girlfriend Season 2, Engage Kiss, Uncle from Another World, Licorice uh, Re Recoil, and Tokyo Mew Mew New. Although I, I watched a little bit of it, but I'll still toss it in there. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't watch a ton of everything, so I mean, I'm kind of with you on that one. I watched, uh, I watched Ruby. I watched Tokyo Mew Mew New. I watched Extreme Hearts. I watched uh, Orient Season 2. I watched uh, Dan Machi Season 4. I watched uh, Licorice Recoil. I watched the first episode of My Isekai Life. Uh, I watched Shine On, uh, whatever the fuck that full name was. It, it's called Buchigide. <laughs> uh, I watched Engage Kiss. And then I also watched uh, Futo P.I., which is the show that I wanted to watch that, uh, that they shoved at the end of the season. So what I want to ask first is what show like disappointed you like let's let's kick it off like let's i'm we gonna save the best like the 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 coolest shit for last so like what show on your list like did you watch and you were like this this ain't this ain't it and because i i kind of want to go first uh i won't say it disappointed well actually yeah i will say it kind of disappointed me engage kiss mm. like that mm. that show was i thought like the the main character I watched like the first episode and I was like, the main character has potential just because he was such a piece of shit. And I kind of dug that. I was like, all right, we, you know, sometimes you need a character that shakes it up and is a bit out of the ordinary for like the typical uh, anime protagonist, like the anime male protagonist. I was like, yeah, I hope he does suck. And I, I kind of like that the way he was like digging in his girlfriend's pockets, like having her pay for his shit. He ordering stuff. She like fixing him food and in pitch black darkness and all that. I was like, okay, this is a, a unique little angle. Uh, either he, either the girl eventually comes around to being like, this man fucking sucks, or 
Uh, the other end of things is he kind of like crawls out of it and like makes a better person of himself. And that may have happened, but like, I'm not going to lie. I got to like the end of the episode and I was like, I, y'all heard that long ass list of, of shows that I listed off. And I got to the part where, you know, they're in the middle of fighting this fucking monster. Cause like the whole plot, the plot of Engage Kiss is that there are demons in the world and like these basically these like uh different corporations bid on who's going to fight and take the demons out and uh the main character is with this smaller company and he always bids like really low bids and he winds up giving most of the money away to his company and like the reason he can always do it is because he's got a contract with like an a-class demon and like the other demons are like not a-class at all so like he just comes in but she's like a succubus and so, like, she's, like, a succubus and in love with him or whatever. And so, like, she's constantly trying to, like, you know, bang him or whatever. And, I, I like, there's a point in the episode where they're, like, fighting a giant monster. And they have to hold, do a whole fucking break from the action and everything that they had built up to that point so that she could redo their contract, which involved, like, this long makeout yeah, kiss. Yeah, you know what time and, it is. <laughs> and the whole time I was watching, I just rolled my eyes. I'm like what the fuck is this shit? Like, what is this garbage? Like, I'm so tired of this. Like, I, it's not that I don't like, it's not that I, I have a problem with fan service where I'm like, it's gotta be eradicated, but this shit was just detracting from the episode. And it just like, I'm like, uh, you know, we, it's not like we being monetized so I can say whatever the fuck I want really. Bro, it's porn out there. <laughs> Who is this for? Porn exists. So like you, why are you watching this? Like you see you're watching this to, to like what? To get your jollies? Like it's weird. Like watch some, like it's, it's, go watch porn and then come back to fiction, actual fiction and just watch actual fiction. Like what the fuck am I looking at? Uh, they sat there and they, they had to make out and you know, it's, it's close up on their lips and all this shit. And then she, you know, flirting with the, I'm like, it looked like they was about to fuck. I'm like, look, let's get to the fucking, like, I'm ready to fight. Like, once you get to the fight scene, I'm trying to see some boxing, my, my guy. Like, this is a waste of my fucking time. And so I'm sitting there heated, and I, I knew as soon as they finished it, they they wrapped up, they had some little shit at the end, but I was already out. Like, once they wasted their time with that, I said, yup, this shit out. And it might it may have improved, and, you know, somebody, uh, the Engage Kiss fans might come for me. You know, they find this video, be like, man, how could you talk about Engage Kiss like this? Because it sucked. The first episode was ass, that's why. Don't tell me nothing about no, oh, it get better later. I don't have time for that. I listed off like eight different shows, my guy. And the rest of them, for the most part, I liked. So like, yeah, that was definitely the big disappointment for me. Uh, Rakeem, do you have a disappointment that a show that you just was kind of like, this This could have been better or I just didn't really care about it like that? Yeah, so out of the ones I watched, the most disappointing to me probably was actually Black Summoner. Not be and I, I didn't get far into it, mainly from the first episode I watched. And the reason it was disappointing for me is because it felt so by the numbers. Mm. You know, once you watch the isekai drama, and the genre, and I'm not going to be very honest with y'all, I am experiencing the isekai fatigue now. <laughs> like, I get it. I mean, hey, like, it's, it's, been like ten, it's been like 10 years, man. I think we all man. Kinda... <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be fair, um... I didn't watch as many isekais in that time period, so I didn't really feel the fatigue as much as most people do. Mm. But now I'm really feeling it because now you can see it, see all the tropes lining up perfectly. And of course, usually like with isekais, they fit within the trope. Then you get like two, three episodes in, they really hit what the hook of the show actually is. But like that first episode of Black Summoner did like nothing to have me like really interested in it. It was so by the numbers and everything it did. Um, you know, you go to the other world, he gets, he has some kind of unique magic ability, um, the RPG aspect of it down to like that. When Black Summoner, like this Isekai, this character is, uh, he goes to another world and he's one of a rare type of magician, a uh, mage called a summoner and summoners in this world are very rare. So he has to hide the fact that he's a summoner and he starts off getting his first buddy, uh, that he captures and summons. It's so by the numbers. It's like RPGs I played when I was like literally eight years old. I remember like going through these phases, like fight your first enemy, uh, capture it. It's Pokemon. Uh, you know, get on your side, then have it fight other monsters. And it's great. Um, you know, I mean, I think, I mean, for like, maybe as, as, a, as it progresses, it might get better, but it was so by the numbers. And the first episode just didn't, I mean, nothing to really hook you. 
I, I bring this up a lot um, with my friends internally, but I have to bring it up because it's the truth. I always reference when I watch Fire Force Episode 1. Not to say the rest of Fire Force doesn't have issues, but it has the perfect first episode. It, does, it doesn't it waste does your time. Episode, yeah. It's like really, it's perfect. It gives you the hook of the show, what the villains are, what the mythos is, who the characters are, who the protagonist is, how he ties into the rest of the show, what he's trying to prove. In one episode, I understand what's going on on some base level. There's a whole bunch of stuff after that, but I am hooked. I want to see what's happening next. Black Summer did not give me that. And like, that's the problem sometimes with have with animes is that they don't do enough in that first episode to get you hooked. They want you to stay three, four, five episodes. And man, there's too much anime out there for me watching some mediocrity <laughs> on the first episode. You got to get me in, bro. Uh, so yeah, that was that was my most disappointing episode. I think it could have done a lot more to get me hooked on it. I think I'm going to watch one or two more episodes, but if, it does, if nothing changes, I might drop it. Straight up. Look, uh... <laughs> I uh, so it took me a while to get prepared for this this episode because I there was so many anime that I wanted to try, but then I was like, okay, well, how am I gonna whittle this down? Because like I started prepping for this like at the start of last week, like not too long after we finished up filming this episode. I mean, filming last week's episode, I was like, all right, it's a lot of anime, and I hadn't seen any of it. Right, full disclosure, I hadn't seen any of it, and so like, and you see, like I listed off that long ass list, so obviously I put in a little bit of work, but like I was like, okay, how am I gonna whittle this this list down so i went to a live chart and i was like all right let's start looking at some trailers and so i looked at the black summoner trailer and i was like if this don't look like the most generic i didn't seen it before not about to do not a damn thing new as it's a kind and ever i say don't worry about it and i just immediately hit ignore and kind of forgot about it uh and there are a couple of other shows like that i watched cook like i actually did watch a couple of shows uh at the start of July, because I was, like, really excited to get into anime, and I was like, anything new, I'll, I'll check it out. And so, like, I, I mentioned My Isekai Life, and that was another show that was a lot like that. It's just a quiet protagonist. Uh, he got all the fucking powers in the world. You know, he got random chicks fawning over him for whatever reason. I was like, man, you know what? I watched one episode. I was like, I, I've seen enough, and that was it. So, like, the Isekai fatigue, I, I feel it, too. And I, it wasn't as bad for me like four or five years ago. Uh, but now, like, so many years on of seeing this shit just back to back to back. And, like, occasionally, even some of the more generic ones can do something to stand out. You know, like, my eighth uh, son kind of stands out because it, it, it's less about how powerful he is and more, more about how having that power and having the class that he has in, in royal society that limits him. Like, there are certain things that are expected of him. He has bigger expectations. The more powerful he becomes, the higher he raises in rank, the more expectations they have, the more things that he has to do. And that's kind of fascinating. Even if the show isn't all that great all, all around, at least it's doing something that I hadn't seen before. But so many of these isekai, it's just like, bro, this, this, it's control C, control V, bro. Like, you, you didn't change, like, is it's the, what's the meme? Uh, copy my home can i copy your homework yeah but change it a little like it's just that <laughs> and like goddamn like still like today they had i believe the crunchyroll expo and they announced a whole bunch of anime and this is it's gonna date the episode a little bit but whatever they they announced the crunchyroll expo and then like one of them was like oh you know i'm a vending machine in another world oh yeah <laughs> like, i did see that that got an anime Christ, now. Like, and i remember hearing about that when i remember hearing about the manga a, a while back and it's like yeah, you know, it was bound to happen. <laughs> we made that joke months ago. I didn't make that joke. I knew the show existed. Yeah, and I, I, was like... I knew it too. And yeah, I, I kind of felt like, yeah, when you said it, I was like, I, I know Sage has to know about it. <laughs> yeah. And sure enough, like I thought it was just going to stay a manga, but no, they just make every isekai into an anime now. And it, they just, I, I'm begging y'all just like, it's okay. You can make a regular fantasy, but like, if you're going to make one, at least make it stand out in some kind of way. Uh, Terrence, like, what show do you feel like disappointed you that just wasn't what you wanted it to be? Or did you just watch all bangers to you? So, um, I had to think about it a bit, but as, as soon as you, because because I didn't even think about what was disappointing to me, but then I looked at my list and you actually mentioned it. I agree. Engage Kiss. And my reason is going to be a little different from yours. Mine is actually, I didn't come up with this on my own. Uh, I was watching a Gigax video um, on um, the Summer 22 anime. And he talked about Engage Kiss. And he said that he felt it was like a early 2010s anime done now. 
And mm. I'd have to agree is that, you know, you have your pink haired girl, like your, your, you know, guy who's like head over heels for the protagonist, the protagonist. He's just, he doesn't seem outstanding in any kind of way. He's the type of dude where he, you wonder like, why are all these women fawning over him? There's this third wheel girl that's in the picture who she clearly has some kind of feelings for the guy as well. And I don't, I don't really have so much of a problem with the fan service or the kissing and everything. It's like, I get it. I mean, it's not new, you know, that kind of thing has happened in anime before, but it just, it feels like the type of anime where it's like, I, I've seen this before. I don't really think it's going to be outstanding enough to warrant me finishing it. Um, I think this one, this is animated by a one pictures, right? Is that correct? Do you know? Uh, I'm about to know because I think the there's yes, cause yes. yeah because there's I think there's two anime this season anime by A1 I think it's uh it's this one Engage Kiss and I think the other one is uh Licorice uh, Recoil I think oh I oh think. we gonna talk about Licorice Recoil in just yeah a second. yeah I, I think uh -oh. but um but yeah out of the I I would just say me personally based on what I've watched out of the two uh Engage Kiss is the lesser one um just in my opinion well, I like a lot yeah but um yeah that's that's how I feel is that engaged kiss for me is the disappointment of the season, just because it is one of those anime where it looks nice. So it kind of lulls you into a false sense of security where it's like, Oh, this anime looks good. It's probably going to be a banger, but then you get into it and it's like, mm, I feel like I, I can skip this one. So, and, and I, I will say, I, I feel kind of like the same way as you that, you know, if there are some engaged kiss fans that happen to watch this, you know, if you do, Hey, thank you for the engagement. But um, <laughs> if, if you do happen to watch it and you say like, no, it gets better. Cause I have heard some people say that it gets better after like the third episode or so. I don't know. I, I kind of agree with you guys that I'm at the point now where the whole, it gets better later on doesn't really work for me now. It's like, I kind of need you to, start off like put your best foot forward and give me the goods early on because it's like for for anime now they're just too much i was looking at the uh, anime chart and it's just like even the stuff that i haven't watched it just it, I, I was looking at what i did watch and then i looked at what i didn't watch and i was like man this just feels feels like there's so much more i have to do and it's like of course you know nobody's paying me to watch this kind of stuff i watch it of my free will but at the same time it's like i don't if I don't need to watch this, I'm not going to. And so that's kind of how I feel about Engage Kiss. I'm going to drop it and just move on to something else. So here's the thing uh, about It Gets Better. It Gets Better cannot be done for something that's like trash. And then suddenly it's like, all right, it's it's all okay now. It's passable. Like It Gets Better got to be done for something that's like, yeah, it's just all right. And then it gets amazing. It, it, gets, it gets like top tier for the season. If you tell me some shit like that, then y'all might come back and waste my time investing to like get to like the point where it gets better. But like, I bet it get, even when it gets better, it's still not like going to be best of the season. Yeah. It's I mean, just hell, gonna be like, like, a, like a black Clover had that problem. Like early on, a lot of people dismissed black Clover because you know, it was just mediocre in the beginning and it eventually got better. But you know, it's one of those things where better was, let's be honest, uh, for the anime, it was like what the water temple arc or whatever it was where the water temple arc was really good, yeah. but it's still just like good for a shonen. Yeah, it's it, not like good, like top tier, greatest of all time type shit. Yeah, I feel and like it really it needed really, to be that. Yeah, I feel like it didn't really get good until like the tournament arc. I'm not turning this into Black Clover episode, but I'm just saying that as like an example of you know, a show that started out mediocre, mm. but did get better, but it took it too damn long to get and how, better. Yeah, exactly. So how many, how many episodes is that? That let's see when you get to like that tournament art. I think for the anime, that's like what maybe like the forties. Like is it the forties? I was gonna go it's, up higher, but maybe it is. I, I don't remember. It might be. It might be higher, but I don't think yeah. so. I think it's in the. It's somewhere in the forties, fifties. That's, that's still a lot. That's still thirty five. That's still too many episodes. So you know, hey, the point is, it gets 35. better. Sometimes <laughs> just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work when there's too much other stuff to watch. It's like you only have so much finite time on this earth. Why waste it trying to get to the good part of something? It's like let me get to the good as soon as I can. It just it is what it is. Our attention spans are, our attention spans are short. We have so much uh, media pulling us in different directions. It's like you gotta get you gotta hook us in immediately. And if you don't, well, you're gonna be left behind. It just is what it is at this point. Yep. And the other end of that, like the other A1 picture show that you brought up, Licorice, Re Licorice Recoil, 
Is it Likers uh, or Leakers? Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I have no idea. You, you, it's a great question. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, the other one, man. So I, I tweeted this uh, leading up to this podcast. I was like, man, you can really tell the difference between an anime where, like, oh, it's the, it writes the, the female characters. About. Yes. Okay. Okay. It, it, there's, there's a difference between anime that write female characters for, like, the sake of, like, titillation and male gaze and, like, just that certain audience of people who just want, like, a, a that wish fulfillment ass type universe. And then, like, people who actually care about writing women and write, like, compelling women characters that you actually like. Because, man, I fucking love R Licorice Recoil. Okay. Holy shit. That character, like, the main character, uh, what is it, Chisato? Yeah, she's uh, yeah, Chisato, so, yeah. She's so likable. Like, That's everything she say, does, yeah. she has so much personality. Like, she opens the episode, like, the first time you see her, well, not the first time, but, like, the first big scene she has where, like, she walks into her, like, because, like, the story... I will get to the story, but like she walks into like the the uh, the cafe where they work out, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, uh, there were people saying that there's somebody cute working at this cafe." And one of the chicks is like, "They're talking about me," and she was like, "And and the main character just looks and is like, look, your face is the only joke you should be telling, you drunk." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like the bird, like everything about that character is great, from like her optimistic outlook on things to how like she just kind of lives life her own way even though she lives in this like she's a part of this really rigid organization but her skill has just what's the word i'm looking for kind of absolved her of all the like the 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 regulations she just kind of like yeah i'm so good i don't really i just live life my own way and i do things my own way and that's just so refreshing and it's just so and this is a rule that i've had about really anime for a long time if you want an anime with some really well written character female characters or even just decent written female characters because like well written is is a high bar to clear for anime unfortunately um if you want some anime with some decently written female characters pick an anime where there are no men involved or the number of men are like reduced drastically and this is one of those <laughs> I feel like and a as trope a, for that <laughs> probably like I, I dating back to like koehime muso when i was a kid when i was much in my 20s and you know it's just like a, a cast of women and like suddenly they're free to do things that aren't how do I relate to some dude? How do I relate to some there man? Is, there is a trope for that. I'm blanking on what the name of it is. I'll probably think of it later on in the episode and I'll bring it up. But yeah, th that is a trope. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess uh, this is one of the shows that I like the most. There are two. Uh, I'll come back around to another one. And if y'all have more than one, feel free. Uh, uh, I, I love Licorice Recoil. Like the first episode, it, it's about... These girls, like, apparently a long time ago, like, some years before the show started, there was this really bad uh, cataclysm in Japan, right? And so you get these, these girls, like, the, there's this, a wave of, like, chaos that happens, and then gradually peace comes back. And the way they brought back peace was by, for whatever reason, hiring a bunch of girls to become, like, assassins. And they, like, kill problems. They, like, go ahead and assassinate problems before they can become problems. And, like, there's this one character... Takina? Yeah. I think her name is. Yeah. yeah, Takina, where she's like really good, but she also just kind of doesn't care. She does things her own way. And so like the episode opens with them like some of the Leakerous girls in like a, a hostage situation where one of their own has been taken hostage and they're like waiting on someone and then like their order, they've been given orders and they don't want to, and like Takina's like, nah, fuck that. There's this uh <laughs> fucking giant machine gun that I can use. And she just like mows down all the terrorists, she kills everybody. <laughs> it's so Holy live, crap. bro. She just emptied the clip on them. And like, she kills everybody there except the hostage. She's like, oh yeah, you know. And they like, you could have killed the hostage. And she was like, yeah, but I didn't. And so like the whole group was like, yeah, but you don't follow orders. So they kicked her out. And they, they like, reassign her to, like, this, this cafe where, like, the strongest girl in the group, uh, Chisato, she stays. And Chisato does things differently. She doesn't like to kill people at all. And it kind of harkens back, now that I think about it, to, like, those old days in the early 2000s where there would be all these protagonists that were, like, OP as fuck, but they never wanted to kill anybody. Mm. Like, Vash the Stampede mm -hmm. and, and Kenshin from a running Kenshin. Kenshin. Mm -hmm. Or even uh and this is fan service reference, but whatever, Tendo Rusina from um Grenadier. Uh basically just uh Vash with giant tits. 
And uh, like they all had these, like they were the most talented person in the show at any given moment, but they gave themselves a higher level of difficulty because they were like, I'm not going to take any lives if I don't have to. And Chisato's just like that. She refuses to take lives. She's doing whatever the fuck she has to. And sometimes lives are taken and she can't do anything about it. And that's like the, the, the thing she has to deal with. And she's trying to teach Takina like, hey, you don't have to live the way that they've taught you to live. And that's such, and then also it helps. This show's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Like, well, it's, yeah, it is well animated. Yeah it's, yeah, it's so pretty. Like just sitting there, you just like, yo, everything's so well animated and so beautiful. And so like that's easily, well, not easily. It's one of my two top top two favorites for the season so far. Um, Rakeem, what's your favorite so far? And if you have two, we'll do another round. Well, most of the shows I've mentioned so far, um, they're still pretty early. But I was I will give one uh I'm a little biased for because uh I like the material already. Uh Ruby Ice Queendom, I will say at least I early on because that one. Yeah. Um so I will I'm gonna say it like this because there are things I I, I liked and I things I, I kind of am like a little iffy on. So the beginning of Ruby Ice Queendom, for those who don't know about Ruby, Ruby is a, a series that started on like as a YouTube sh uh series through Rooster Teeth. Uh, the creator Monty Um was a big guy back in the day for making original content for like action scenes with characters from other media. He put them together and they have these great spectacle battles. And eventually he made his own series with, with the help of Rooster Teeth called Ruby. And Ruby is basically like these, these young girls are huntresses. They uh, go to an academy where they're trained to defeat these beasts called Grimm. And it's kind of just an excuse to have young girls do really cool stuff with overly over-the-top weapons and magic powers and it's awesome and it's been around for a long time of course you know depending on the fan base people you talk to people say the quality has dipped over the years yeah. i don't care about that i'm a fan of the series i've been watching it for a long time so i am biased i will admit it i am biased i wanted this to be good and i can say um the first episode of ruby ice queendom even the first three episodes they're pretty solid the first episode is literally the opposite of black summoner it doesn't waste your time Introduces all the characters, a lot of action, gets straight to the point, um, gives you the hook. You want to see more. And what's cool about the, uh, you know, kind of, kind of the show in general is that it kind of shows um, a flip on 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 tropes from uh, fairy tales. So each character represents kind of a fairy tale motif. Uh, the main character Ruby herself is Red Riding Hood. Um, uh, her sister is like Goldilocks. Uh, she has a friend named Blake who's kind of like the beast. Um, and there's other characters like that. There's another group of people who are like uh, gender swaps versions of of uh, Mulan and uh, Thor and Prince Charles. People from like Jean all types of fantasy. John the Ark, who is my favorite character. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 just, I got a soft spot for John Ark. Um, yeah, so the, it's kind of like cool little motifs like that. What makes the show good to me is that it's kind of like taking the elements of Ruby I liked. And the early on, at least, it faithfully adapts the first couple of episodes pretty closely pretty closely to what the material was like not one for one because it's anime and it's a little different but pretty close to the original material but it's animated awesome the animation is really cool ruby is a, a cool show but it, if you go back and watch those original episodes the animation is not it stiff. Like, it's kind of <laughs> it it's stiff really man. hard to go back and watch the original <laughs> content and we're in a modern world now and going back and watching that is hard so seeing it in this new modern context really was cool for me it was kind of seeing like like the remasters you see of old games now, like the HD 2D kind of thing. Old games being remastered into like the modern day. It's kind of how I felt watching it as an anime. Um, so the first three episodes adapt the story pretty pretty loosely. I mean, not loosely, but pretty closely. Ruby uh, joins the academy after uh, uh, stopping these uh, robbers from breaking into a store. She teams up with her team. Uh, they go on to this hunter trip. They fight Grimm for the first time. Um, most of that's faithful. The only iffy thing about the show to me ironically so the difference in the anime and the original show they're going for it has a different hook to it they're they're doing some original content adding in some new characters and focusing more on one of the secondary characters uh weiss who's like uh uh this how do i describe it snooty rich girl who's trying to overcome her family's expectations and forge her own path and she's kind of more of a center character in this story and at a certain point in the story she gets infected with this kind of poison weird uh, Grim that's able to not poison, but like Grim who affects people's bodies, 
and the group has to go into her dream and her consciousness to help her and rescue her. That's the hook of the of of this season. Hmm. I will admit when they uh, what, what were you about to say? No, I was just gonna say, huh? That's because yeah, that's definitely different than yeah the, the original different. series. So okay, huh? Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, for me, I guess I, this is the part of the bias when they transition to that 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 dream sequence, and I was I was watching some of it like man. It kind of messed up the pacing because they were they were faithful at adapting it. It's kind of like when you watch uh, an anime a man, a, an anime adapted faithfully to a manga, then they put filler in it, and it felt like some of the pacing was a little off. It became a little slower. Um, you know, it, it it wasn't as as quite as interesting. We're still pretty early in it. It's on the episode five that came out, I think, today or uh, recently. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep st- still keep up with it. I hope it improves over time. But that's definitely the one I am. I was the most hyped for, and I wasn't too disappointed with, enjoyed. Uh, so I like that one a lot. I think the other one, the only other thing I can say is like, uh, Shino uh, Bakuretsu Boys, whatever, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to, to remember. <laughs> the, Shinsu, the Shinsengumi anime, uh, it's, it's really over the top. Um, it kind of has a Super Sentai feel to it, where it takes elements of history and people from history, but then kind of Sentai's it and like, Gives them like magic swords and personalizing that. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure for me because I'm a so I'm kind of a, a sucker for Sentai stuff. If you can give me a group of people and they're color coded and they have cool personalities, that's enough for me. Kind of, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm easy to please, but I'm still pretty early on that show, so I, I don't have a whole lot to that. I will say I, I like the energy of the show. I feel like uh, it's a little lighthearted, so I, I don't have to take it too seriously. But at the same time, it has some very interesting fight scenes. Some interesting character developments. Uh, they have like an interesting kind of magic system or power system in the show that I'm kind of trying to understand. I like it so far. Um, so yeah, those are probably the shows I've enjoyed the most um, uh, so far this season. Uh, man, I, I definitely didn't think you were going to pick Uchi Uh You're right. It does. It is. It doesn't take itself as seriously as I thought it would. Um, it kind of opens. Uh, Rakeem didn't explain it um, as far as like the plot, but like a brief synopsis is like basically. The OG Shinsen Gumi gets murdered. Like, they get murked. I don't know where some dude just comes along and it's like, y'all gotta go. Kills them all except, like, one dude. And, like, the one remaining dude goes around capturing these uh, prisoners that were scheduled to be killed. And they were all specialists, uh, specialists at different things. And he captures them all and he says, hey, uh, y'all want to live? Join the Shinsen Gumi. Become, like, the replacement Shinsen Gumi. That's, the, like, either you do that or you die. And it's very much a Suicide Squad type of thing. Of course, there's a a one dude who he looked normal, like he looked like you know he didn't have a color coded hair and shit. He start talking shit, dies in like two seconds, and like it was. It's funny because like the way it plays out in the episode is the guy literally is like, "Man, what? Become a shit Gumi? Fuck y'all!" And he's murdered instantly, right? And so, like, the protagonist has, like, the most reason to hate samurai. His life was ruined by samurai. He's just, like, super pissed. But he gets to give a whole fucking speech about why he doesn't want to do it. And, like, nobody kills him. Like, when I tell you the first dude, the normal-looking guy, talks shit and dies like that, like, literally, he starts talking shit. And, like, the, the one of the dudes who gets accepted, because he, he was like, all I know how to do is kill people. If I can kill people in the Shinsugumi bit. Dude started talking shit. The guy with the blue hair, the assassin, mercs him. The protagonist, he gets to have his whole, like, fuck the samurai. They ruined my <laughs> life. They did this. I don't ever want to be a samurai. And, like, Accurate. he finally gets to have his little explain, like, why he hates the samurai. And, like, instead of him them, him just dying instantly, they're like, oh, yeah, you get revenge against those guys. So there you go. Come join us. I'm like, I, I guess. But it's a, it's a small speed bump on what's an otherwise enjoyable series. So, like, I, you know, it wasn't great. But it was not bad by any means. And uh, if it was a weaker series season, I probably would go back and watch it. Uh, Terrence, what show did you like the most? So, um, Or shows if you want to do two. I'll, I'll do two, but there's one that I'll talk about the most. Um, I know we were kind of ragging on Isekai earlier. And, you know, rightfully so. The Isekai genre has just it, it's, it's gotten crazy because... We're at the point now where we have multiple isekai in every anime season. And most of them are, eh, they're whatever. Like like you said, Sage, they're kind of like copy and paste at this point. But there's usually like one that kind of stands out in some way every season. And 
the one for me that stands out, this one isn't really even like a full on isekai. It's more like, I guess the, the thing that it does differently is technically it's like a reverse isekai. And I'm talking about uncle from another world. Yo, mm. uncle from another world is really, really good and really, really okay. funny. So the premise of it is, um, the uncle, the main character, he went to, he got isekai and he went to another world and he was there for, I think 17 years. And he, while in the real world, like his original world, he was in a coma. And so after like 17 years of being in the other world, the fantasy world, he came back to his own, his original world and he, because he was in that coma. So he woke up and his nephew's there looking over him and everything. And he still has his powers from the other world. And so he's showing off like his powers to his nephew and everything. And um, the probably the, the funniest thing about this show is the uncle is such a huge Sega fanboy. Like this man, <laughs> he could single hand. Like if, if Uncle from Another World really takes off and a lot of people watch it, this man might um, bring Sega back to making consoles. Who knows? <laughs> That's how much of a Sega fan he is. Like literally, one of the first things he says when he comes back to his world is, "How is Sega doing?" And he was Isekai. He was no! Isekai in like the late nineties, around the time when the Sega Saturn was still out. Oh, and so when no. he comes back, his nephew tells him, Sega isn't making consoles anymore. They just do games. And he's like mind blown. He's like, I need a Sega Saturn right now. And so one in the first <laughs> episode, they uh get a, a Sega Saturn off of eBay or whatever service they're using, and they start playing uh they make actual references to those old games like uh was it guardian heroes he talks wow. about uh he talks about sonic like he they make multiple references to sega games like it is it is really funny like i don't know how some anime can do that you know how some anime they have it where they can make they make references but they have to change the name up so they don't get sued in some way this right. anime they they just doing whatever the hell they want. They can talk about Sega. They can talk about Sony. Granted, I guess those are all Japanese companies, so I guess that's maybe the reason why. But, Might be sponsors. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, could be sponsors. Might be sponsors. Okay, that okay, that is a good point. Actually, that's a very good point. Um, but yeah, the the episodes <laughs> are just really funny, just because uh, one thing that he can do is he can project his memories in like a TV format to show his nephew to show his nephew like the things that happen in the other world and. He's not like the best looking guy. And so when he was in the fantasy world, people saw him as kind of like an orc or something like he doesn't really look like an orc, but he just looks so strange to everybody there that they're just like, you don't look like the rest of us. And so they kind of just shy away from him and everything. They don't really respect him, despite the fact that he's like super powerful in the other world. And when he comes to his original world, the way that um, because he's been gone for so long, he obviously doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a place or anything. So he stays with his nephew and his nephew has the idea to um, use his powers to uh, make YouTube videos. And so he's he has a YouTube channel. He's making YouTube videos and uh, he's trying to get a bunch of views and get subscribers and everything. It's the show is hilarious. It's for me by far the standout of the season. It's it's well at like the, the art style. It's it's kind of. It, it's kind of unique because it's very um like the the lines are very well drawn if that makes sense when you see it maybe you'll know what i'm talking about but it's kind of it, like uh buchigiri almost because the lines around that were really yeah like, kind of like the outline of the characters yeah 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 yeah, yeah it okay just, it, it looks really clean and the, the animation is good and it's just it's just super funny i'm uh, um uh, on episode three now i think uh for like the uh english like the the u.s um, uh, netflix release because it's on netflix um they're uh, on episode three right now and i think technically it's on like episode four or maybe five in japan um but netflix is just a little bit behind but um uh, but yeah it's three episodes out right now it's really good i recommend everyone check it out if you're in for a good time and just a good laugh it's it's, it's highly enjoyable uh the other show that i was going to say um is one that I watched today and I only watched one episode of, but I am, I like it. It's call of the night call of the night. It's, oh, it I looks to watch that. So it looks really nice. Like it is a really nice, like the, the colors because it takes place at night. I mean, you know, in the title, but uh, because it takes place at night, like the colors of the city and the characters, they just really pop. It just has a really nice art style to it. And uh, the plot for it is um, this kid, he's like 14 in middle school, and he he's suddenly kind of like struck with insomnia. There's like 
backstory to it, but I'm not going to get into all that to I'm not going to bore everyone. But um, he's struck with kind of like insomnia, and he's this is uh in the first episode he's like spending his uh first time out like at night like past like his bedtime so to speak and he ends up running into this uh girl who ends up being a vampire and shenanigans kind of like ensue and um she ends up i guess really what the show is going to do is is going to um like at the end of the episode he wants to become a vampire after being with her and uh what she wants to do is she says like well okay i mean you can become a vampire if you want, but here's what you're going to have to do. Because the thing is, in order to become a vampire in this world, you have to fall in love with that vampire when that vampire bites you. And so that's, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a romance anime, but it is an interesting angle. I will put it that way. Um, But uh, at the end of the episode, she ends up taking him on like a tour of the night. And it's just... It's just really cool anime. There's not like, I mean, there's fan service angles too. It's like the main character. She's definitely probably going to be like one of the waifus of the season. But I mean, even besides all that, it's just a really nice looking show. And uh, once again, go to reference uh, Gigic in his video where he talked about how it's just a show that has like very um, kind of like lo-fi vibes to it. And I can see that when you watch it, kind of like it, it has a mixture of like hip hop in the soundtrack and kind of like lo-fi vibes to it. And it's just, a really just based on that first episode, I was just really impressed and just thought it was just a nice show to watch. And of course, I'm also a fan of, you know, romance anime. So, you know, that that hooked me as well. But yeah, I think that that's one of the standouts of the season. And I'll continue to watch that. So Uncle from Another World, that's my number one. Like that show is just hilarious and amazing. And the second is Call of the Night because I think there's definitely some potential there. And I heard it gets better. So if I was blown away by the first episode, then I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it. Uh, so I guess I, I do need to talk about two shows since you mentioned Isekai. Um, one show that's like, and I'm happy to have it back is, uh, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Mm. That's like mm. one of the OGs. Like there are a handful of, of Isekai that are like, even if you don't think of them as like the greatest anime of all time or like in that pantheon, it's still very good. And there's a reason why they're around for They've so long. They've kind of like superseded the Isekai curse of mediocrity, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Yes. Uh, picking up like Don Machi is, uh, which is like the Japanese version, like the Japanese shortened version of the name. Don Machi is, is back. And I'm, I'm so happy. Like I watched by accident. I watched episode two. I'm gonna have to go back and watch episode one, but like, it's, it's so solid. Like the, the world building is top notch. Uh, if you've never seen Don Machi, the, the, the hook of the show is basically the, like this one guy. Well, it's, it's a world in which everybody works for all these adventurers work for like different gods and they go on missions into this gigantic dungeon that can, that seemingly goes on forever. And the stronger you are, the deeper down the dungeon you can go. Uh, they, I don't know what the end level is. Uh, this, this season, the fourth season has them starting on level 25. They come out of the dungeon periodically. There are ways to like basically fast travel out of the dungeon, get back to the top and whatnot. But like they go into the dungeon and they're trying to conquer the dungeon and they fight all these powerful enemies. And like the, the, the world building is just the hook is the main character. The main character, Bell Cranel is this guy. And I, I'm not sure if I've talked about this bell on the show before, but like, let's say that I haven't. Uh, Bill, like the hook is like, he starts out as this character that kind of sucks. He's not good at his job. Like he's, he's kind of helpless. The first thing you see is him having to be helped by like this chick. Cause like he runs it. Like the first thing you see is him running for his life in the first step in the first mm -hmm. episode of the first season. He's like running for his life. Fucking terrified. Right. And like, the, cause it, there's this giant minotaur that's made its way up from like the top, from like lower floors to like the, the first floor, which is where Bell was at in the first episode. And he's like running terrified and shit like that because he doesn't want to die. And he has to be saved. And he's saved by this like super powerful chick named Eyes who like slices the, the, uh, slices the Minotaur in half, covers Bell in blood. And like all the guys that are around start calling Bell like Tomato Face because he's like covered in blood and shit. And he, it, it makes Jeez. him look like a tomato or whatever. And so like they're making fun of him because he's running. But I mean, like, of course, he didn't want to die. But like the thing about Bell is that. He really embodies that spirit of I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to be useless. And so, like, you see him basically decide to power level. And it turns out he has, like, some ability that lets him gain experience faster than anybody else. So he travels into the dungeon, 
starts fighting. He he's like determined because it's not only is he weak, but his family, like every every adventurer belongs to a god, and the god also has like multiple adventurers under them. The bigger the guild, the more important the god is. At the start of the series, Bell's family is just him. It's him and his god. That's it. And they build onto that family over time. And like it's so cool seeing him. Like, even by the end of the first season, you're already captivated. Like if you don't like Bell, you're probably not going to like the show. But if you like those kind of characters, seeing them grow and change and become a better person uh, and become like a stronger, more assertive type person or somebody that's willing to make changes, not only for themselves, but like for the world around them, like every season is good. And it's just great to have that show back. Like the season three had like such a great hook, like an amazing twist to it. And like, it kind of made Bell be forced to see the world in a different way. And like, season four picks up on that and it's like all right well now that you see the world in a different way how are you going to react to it and it kind of gets him back into the dungeon and it really solid like great to have it back animation's good as always so you know uh that one's one and then the other show that i really like and this is kind of a surprise or this will come as a surprise to at least my co-host uh extreme hearts i liked extreme hearts a lot so like one of my favorite anime or two of my favorite anime are actually uh Magical Girl, Lyrical Nanoha, and Dog Days. And both of them are done by the same creator and done by the same animation studio, Seven Arcs. And so, like, uh, I believe the creator's name is Masaki Suzuki, but do not quote me on that. But, like, the creator and Seven Arcs teamed up for a new project, and it's called Extreme Hearts. And, the pro like, the idea behind Extreme Hearts is, like, it's this world where there's, there's this young girl who wants to be, like, an idol. She wants to be, like, a singer. And that's her dream, and she's trying to follow her dream, except it ain't working. So far, she's released four songs. She's got 36 viewers. And, like, she's all hype. Like, she had, she she was good at, she's talented, but nobody's paying attention to her. And so, like, early in the series, or early in the episode, first episode, she gets dropped from her label. They're like, look, we tried. Uh, we, we've been trying to find you, like, some people. We've been trying to get you, your name out. It's really not working for us, so we just going to have to let you go. But they give her an out. They give her like, hey, this is what you can do instead. You can go and perform in the Extreme Hearts tournament. Or I think, I forget what the exact name of the tournament is. But like, it's a sports tournament in this world where you have like advanced technology. Like you can have advanced clothing, shoes, uh, gloves that allow you to like kick really fast, move really fast. Basically, you get superpowers for like a sports game. And they're like, yeah, if you can become... If you can get to the top of this sports tournament, you get to do your own concert in front of, like, thousands of people. And so, like, she has to go find, like, she trains. She's, like, already kind of talented. She's already kind of athletic, but she's not really good at sports, like, the rules of sports. And so, like, she makes some friends, and, like, the friends basically help her. Like, at first they train her, and then they, like, teach her how to become, like, they, they like, join the team and become, like, part of the sports team. Because, like, it's a single elimination tournament. You lose, you out. And so, like, they're like, okay, well, we're going to help you get to the top because, like, one of the friends that she makes is, like, a really big fan of her music. Like, she just really loves her music. Uh, the girl goes down and does these, like, concerts of one for her and the girl. Like, she's performing, and then she, like, the main character's, like, performing. The other girl's, like, just such a fan. And it's really sweet and kind of somber and sad a little bit in the first episode. And then just to see them all make, like, a group together and, like, decide, okay, well, we're going to, like, the... The girl, like, the, the chick that's, like, her friend is, or the chick that's, like, her fan gets her other friend and are, like, yeah, we want to take you to the top. But it turns out that you can't go by yourself. Like, it, you have to become an idol group. Like, the whole group winds up becoming an idol group. They have to learn how to sing together and play together. And so it's just a really fun series. Like, I, I it's heartfelt. I care about the characters. I want to see them succeed because, like, I think everybody's been in a position where there's something that you just want so bad and for whatever reason, like, you can't quite get there. And, like, seeing someone have that opportunity and just, like, refuse to just take no for an answer and put their all into something to just keep trying to climb their way to the top, it's really captivating. Uh, and it just helps. Like, it like it feels like home. It reminds me of Nanoha so much and, and of Dog Day so much, even though those were way more action-oriented. I still just like the character designs and just like the universe enough so that I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can deal with this. And I'm, like, two episodes in to, like, what I think is on episode five. So I'm probably going to watch more tomorrow. I've just been time-strapped, you know. So, like, because I, I, I was trying to, like, 
watch as many of the shows that I said I was going to watch before the show so that I could, like, you know, have a, a good breadth of shows to talk about. And now I'm going to start culling shows. Like, shows got to go. Like, if I don't, if I think it's kind of mid, if I think it's just I, right, it's got to get the fuck out of there. Speaking of, Terrence, mm -hmm. what shows are you thinking of culling? Like, are what shows are you like, I'm going to stick with these and then these got to go? So what shows am I going to continue to watch and what shows it's like, all right, you're out of here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. By, by the way, the what I was thinking of, it's not a trope, but it's a, it's a measure of representation of the Bechdel test. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, the Bechdel test. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking of in terms of, like, you know, um, have women interact, but it's not about men. But, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, to answer your question, let's see here. I'm going – the first one I'm going to stick with is um, Classroom of the Elite Season 2. And – First off, I did not think we'd ever get a season two for Classroom of the Elite. <laughs> um, when they announced that, I was like, excuse me? F well, first off, it's like Classroom of the Elite, the first season, I, I guess I'll briefly explain the um, the synopsis of it. Pretty much, it's about this high school where uh, all these kids are attending, and there's like different classes. There's uh, Class A, B, C, and D. D is the lowest, obviously. Um, and the premise is that Every month, these uh, each class gets points to that they can spend at the school. They can spend outside the school. They can pretty much it's their money. It's their currency. And the come to find out, like the first month that uh, class D gets uh, these points, they think that oh, we're gonna get them every month. We can just do whatever we want. So they go out and spend it, uh, you know, carelessly. And then come to find out, like nobody was really paying attention in class because the 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 school um they don't like enforce you to like learn you like they, they're not there to like really to like fully um they teach and that's it like they don't like do anything outside of that really and no one was really paying attention they were on their phones gaming and whatnot in the class and come to the uh end of the episode um they find out they look at their phones like hey we didn't get our monthly points like what's going on it's like and the teacher says oh you all should have read the bylines. It's like, you thought that we would just give you points and you're not paying attention. You're not doing the work and everything. It's like, based on everything that you all have done for the month, the points that you get for this month are zero. And so they're all just struggling. And it's, it, it's a, it's a crazy show. It gets pretty crazy in the beginning. Like just on that premise alone, it, it's a hook that uh really uh, snatches you from that first episode. So that's the reason why I was watching it. And I will admit, later on in that first season, it kind of got very heavy fan servicey, and it really was a direction mm -hmm. that I didn't really like, and the plot kind of uh, fell off its rocker a little bit. But I was still engaged with it for the most part. And season two, season two is fine. Like I don't think it's outstanding. It's not like anime of the year by any means. It's it's fine. Is it and, roughly back up to like what you liked about season one? Uh. Not like not as much, I, I would say. It, it like I say, it, it's just fine. I think I'm watching it just to see what happens at this point and the fact that we actually got a season two. So I'm just that willing to sense. see where it goes. You know, I, I don't I don't think it's like a fantastic anime by any means. It's just one of those shows that I'm watching because I watched the first season and I like it well enough to see where it goes. I'll put it that way. Uh Call of the Night, I'm gonna continue with that as I said before. Um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this other one, I'm going to continue with it just because, you know, Hey, every, every like other season or something, like every year, like I need my trash anime, like just this anime. That's just like so bad. That is good. Rent a girlfriend. That's definitely that. Like there's like rent a girlfriend. I could definitely understand why somebody would drop it. It's not like a good show by any means, but, and, and his protagonist, he, he can definitely frustrate you, but it's one of those shows where, it's a dumpster fire and I appreciate it for it. And I, I just sometimes just like watching stuff like that. And I know that that's how a lot of people treat it is it's, it's a dumpster fire that you just can't look away from. And so <laughs> I'll continue on with a uh, rent a girlfriend, uh, uncle from the other world. Yes. Uh, Licorice, uh, recoil. Yeah. I'll continue with that. Cause I, I think that that is going to be, that is one of the stands out of the season. Um, in terms of stuff that I'll drop, 
I don't know about my stepmom's daughter is my ex. I, I'm kind of, uh, <laughs> I know that alone. I, 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 I hate that I have to be the weird one with, with, with a lot of these anime. It's like I bring I mean, these anime. The, and <laughs> it got made, so like you're not the only weird one. Like people, like it was a made, a, it was popular enough for them to make an anime. So, <laughs> well, I guess what I mean is like usually I'll, I'll be the one to bring up the, the weird anime on the show. Uh, but anyway, um. The premise of the show is, well, I mean, it's pretty much in the title. Like, these two characters, they once dated and they broke up, but now they're back together. But in, in a different way, they're back together as a stepbrother, stepsister, because their parents oh got together. But oh their parents no. didn't know. Their parents didn't know they dated at all. So, pretty much, it's about these two characters, the main characters, kind of having to put on an act and kind of be perfect so that way because they, they want their parents relationship to go well like they have no ill wills toward their parents they're happy for them but you know it just kind of sucks that they're having to be around each other in a different way like as brother and sister um when their relationship you know when they broke up it didn't you know work out that well in well, well yeah yeah it didn't end well um the interesting thing about it for me is the dynamic between the two characters actually kind of like the way they bicker in the first episode, it really does feel like, you know, they're brother and sister, you know, but there's also kind of like this tension there where because they once dated, there's still like there's feelings that's there. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a domestic girlfriend, but it's not quite the dumpster fire that domestic girlfriend was. It's kind of like trying to take itself seriously, at least from what I've seen in uh, the first episode, uh, I don't know, maybe later on in the series it just becomes a huge dumpster fire that I'll regret watching. But for right now, I feel like I'm intrigued enough to keep going, but it's one of those shows where I might just drop it just because I don't really have time to follow it. So I, I'm going to put it under the drop category, but I might can low-key continue with it. We'll, we'll see. Um, Engage Kiss, yeah, I'm going to drop that as we talked before. I just... I don't think it's uh, unless I just hear like a huge wave of hype behind it and people saying like, yo, you need to watch this. This is going to be anime of the season or anime of the yes, year. Yes, then yeah, agreed. I'll come back to it. But if I don't hear anything about it, then I'm going to completely drop it. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew New. You know, funny enough, it, I watched that today and it was kind of cool. It was it's a nice nostalgic. throwback. Yeah, it was yeah. very nostalgic watching it. I mean, I remember watching it when it was on the Fox box, and it is completely different now from what it was back then. I mean, of course, all the censoring and everything that, you know. It was on Fox box? Kids. Yeah, it was on the Fox yeah, box. Yeah, Tokyo Mew Mew was like an old 2000 show, and, yeah. and it definitely came on Fox box for a little while. I don't know if it got a complete run because I, I kind of gave up on I Fox box. I don't think it, but it was did around. either. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I, it, I don't know if it, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, this is, like, just the remake. It's supposed to be more accurate to the manga. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Probably compress it down because the manga is not that long. And I think Tokyo Mimi was kind of a long series. So, like, this probably won't be nearly as long. Yeah. Okay. I think the original series is maybe, like, 52 episodes, I think. I mean, that was back then when, you know, they were still doing, you know, that number of episodes for just one show. Right. And it wasn't an issue. But, yeah, I watched the first episode and just it just felt nostalgic watching it just – Thinking back, you know, back in like what, like the early 2000s when that came out and just watching that as a kid. So it was cool to see it. But will I stick with it? Eh, probably not. I don't know if I just have. a. I don't want to. I was going to say a craving, but I feel like that is not the right word. If I just have a longing to watch like a magical girl not. series. <laughs> if I have a longing <laughs> to watch a magical girl series, then, you know, maybe I'll continue with it. But. I doubt it just because um, it's not on Crunchyroll, it's on High Dive, which I will say, I feel like High Dive is a winner this season. Like, I know we've, you know, Crunchyroll, they're acquiring so much. They recently acquired uh, Right Stuff, and it feels like they're the monopoly in the anime industry right now, at least on, like, the American High Dive got side. a few hits. Yeah, but High Dive, they picked up uh, quite a few shows this season. They picked up uh, uh, Made in Abyss, which they, they had the first season, so naturally they're going to continue with season two. They have Call of the Night. Um... They have uh, they have Tokyo Mew Mew. They have a couple of others too, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. But yeah, it's they have quite a few shows that are actually worth watching this season. So you know, hey, not everybody has high dives, so I understand some people may watch it another way. But it's at least good to have some competition out there against Crunchyroll. You know, as much as we kind of it's, it's yeah, as much as it's like easy to want everything on Crunchyroll just so you can watch everything in one place. We kind of still need that competition. We can't have Crunchyroll owning everything, you know. It's, it is what we it would, is. 
as soon as we got that, we would be regretting it because all of a sudden, yeah. like, yep. Crunchyroll could just act out and do whatever they want. That's not good. So, yeah, exactly. That's it, good you're right. High dive being competition. That's great. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that that's that's everything for me. Uh, I know it kind of went on a bit of a list there. But, yeah, that's that's everything for me that I'll probably stick with and the stuff that I'll, I'll drop. So, yeah. Rakeem, like, what are you sure you're going to stick with? And what do you think? Like, all right, man, I'm probably not going to watch no more of this. Okay, so since my list was a lot smaller than uh, Terrence, it's going to be pretty simple for me. Black Summoner is is the odd man out. All the other shows, you know, accrue my interest in some way. Um, the only reason I didn't bring up uh, Futo Pie as much, the Kamen Rider ones, is only had one episode. So it's Max. not that far into the series. I do um, have thoughts about that one, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do, too. Um, I feel like the first episode was a little slow. Uh, definitely the, that. Definitely yeah, it was a little slow. I know it started off with action. It's been so long since so I've actually seen Kamen Rider Doubles. I don't know if it's like one for one, like the first episode, or they changed a, a couple no, no, things. No, 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 yeah. no, This is okay. a sequel. Oh! Yes, yes, sir. Oh, this different. is not like... this. Oh, that's is a, different. The show was over, and, and, and they didn't beat the... the uh, I forget what the name of the group was the, that was selling all the memories and whatnot. They beat them. That, fa that crime family, they done moved on, and now it's like a whole new arc that they uh, embarking on. Because this, this oh. was actually a sequel manga done, and they just finally... It's been around long enough for them to make an anime out of it. Okay, thank you for clearing that up, because I was so confused. I, I was like, I was trying to remember stuff from... I was like, I don't remember these scenes exactly. Like some of that stuff felt like a jump book. Yeah. Like, and I, I almost was like, is this a side story? But it's not a side story because they brought up uh the chick that owns the 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 uh the private agency. She's right. like married, and that happened in I think a movie either at the end of the series or in like one okay. of the movies. So like it's definitely a okay. sequel. Okay. Thanks for clearing it up, man. But yeah, yeah, uh it just hasn't gone on long enough for me to like I'm trying to say I'm like I feel like it needs I need to look, see a little more from it. I just haven't seen enough yet. Um, I, I, I liked Ruby Ice Queendom. Um, only the fourth episode I saw was like a little iffy. The first three I think were solid. So I'm going to watch the fifth, fifth episode and keep watching it. Hopefully like the new stuff they added doesn't drag it down a bit. That's the only thing I'm worried about with that show. Um, and, uh, uh, the Shine On, that looked like just dumb fun. You know, it's a simple show in it. I'm okay with some simple shows sometimes. So I'm, I'm going to give that one a shot. It looked kind of goofy. It looked kind of interesting. So I'm gonna give that more of a shot. But Black Summoner, man, every I was like, I didn't feel nothing watching that. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel angry. I didn't feel upset. I felt nothing. It's just like we make a lot. <laughs> we, yeah, we make a lot of wrestling references references on the show because me and Sage and and Terrence to some degree too are wrestling fans. Um, so uh, yeah, the worst reaction you can get in a wrestling ring. Is nothing. No reaction. <laughs> no reaction at all. That's not a how cheer, I got. It. I was not like, a boo. Just nothing. That I'm probably gonna drop black. So I'm, I might watch the next episode. Maybe. Don't do it. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, so no. Uh, I will say. Um, just 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 for reference, this doesn't have anything to do with the direct discussion. I have kind of picked up some older anime. I started watching One Piece again too. So that's an ongoing series I'm currently watching. Uh, the uh, anime community <laughs> will never be free. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like it's suicide. You, know, you can't escape because now it's like spreading, spreading to different people. Hey, I'm sorry about. Uh, so, actually, I have a second talk about One Piece. I'm currently watching it again because uh, I got kind of nostalgic. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Tim Bush, who's a friend of the show, big friend of the sh friend of the show, and fan of the show, always brings it up. To, like every couple weeks or every week, he says, "Hey, man, da da da," but watch One Piece. And uh, he, he, loves, he got me he one week. He was using that Inuyashiki meme of uh, oh, One Piece was so good this week. Oh. <laughs> Man, <laughs> <was so good. laughs> our Discord sees that like once every I at feel least like once people, a week. Most people only know Inuyashiki because of those memes. That's the only one reason piece. they know about it. <laughs> but that's a whole but yeah. Other, I was that's a whole other side. I was uh, <laughs> I was watching I was watching One Piece again because I the the last time I watched I watch I'm watching it from the beginning. I'm not skipping ahead. I want to get the full experience. So last time I watched the the first era of One Piece when I was like 12 years old. So this is really freaking for me to watch some of these scenes again. And I have to say, I really enjoy rewatching this. I think I'm actually like understanding the context of these stories and how dark they are. And of course, escaping the Fox uh, censorship stuff yeah, so I can yeah. get the full context of every scene. Man, there are parts that made me like tear up a little bit. There are parts that made me really invested. You know, here and there, some stuff that kind of was a little slow, but... 
I'm liking it a lot. So I'm I'm happy I re- we watching One Piece and there's some other shows I'm still watching too. But uh, from the current stuff this season, Black Summoner looks like it's on its way out, and I'm gonna keep watching the other three. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So real quick, Lycra's recoil. I mean, y'all saw me gush over it, so that that's obviously staying. I watched Ruby. I, I didn't. I mean, like, I don't. I never watched the the OG Ruby, so I don't really have any kind of feeling one way or the other. I watched the first two episodes. I liked what I saw, so I'm gonna probably try to stick with that. Tokyo Mew Mew New is out. Uh, it's one of those hard decisions in a lighter season. I might. I'll probably keep it just to like, cause I, I liked what I saw. I never watched the OG, but like, I do. I've I've grown on the magical girl genre. Like, there's so many cool. Uh, magical girl anime and like I've, I've become a fan of a lot of them so I, I was like yeah I'll try it you know why not and uh I would it there's nothing wrong with it it's just not so amazing that I feel like I gotta watch it I feel like if it had come out in a season that wasn't so packed it would be yes yes yeah it, it's something Agreed. that would be worth sticking with but when there's so many anime to watch right now it's like something has to go on the back burner yep uh extreme hearts I mean you saw me talk about that one i gushed about that that's staying uh i saw orient season two uh we, hmm. we talked i talked about that briefly like i i said i watched it um i want to keep with that but i'm probably not because it's a time concern thing i liked what i saw quite a bit but it's like it always feels bad to cut a show like in because like we're gonna come back around to this uh when when the season's over and do a season review and it always feels bad when like the new season's about to start the old season's out and there are shows that you wanted to watch and you just never got back to them for whatever reason like i it feels better when you intentionally drop something as opposed to like yeah i just didn't have the time like that always feels bad to me and so like i would rather just make the hard cut now and orient like i like i was telling rakeem about the hook at the end of season one and the start of season two that I really like. There's this hook, because, like, the show, it has this really shit opening. Like, Orient has a really boring opening. It's not very good, but, like, every arc, it gets a little better. And by the start of arc two, season two, it's pretty solid. And there's this thing, because, like, the whole thing is, like, humanity fighting these giant monsters called Kishin. And, uh, like, the protagonists, like, they, they think that they have the, uh, a, a goal, like, okay, we can take on the Kishin, and then they find out how big the actual strongest Kishin is, and they're like, holy fuck. There's a point where they look at a map, and they're like, man, why is it, what's part of this map just, just blacked out? Like, what the hell is that? And, like, one of the more experienced characters, because, like, the two main protagonists are, like, new to the whole thing of fighting against these Kishin and shit like that, and, like, two of the more, one of the more experienced characters says, oh, I know, come here. And they show them, like, out past the ocean, this giant black wall. And they're like, that's a Kishin. And they're like, holy fuck, what? Like, how, what? And then they explain how that Kishin got to be the size that it is and be the, as dangerous as it is. And I was, like, really into that. But, like, when I think about, like, okay, how many other shows am I going to watch? Because it's not just anime that I got to keep up with. Uh, there are other shows that I want to get back into. There are older sh- anime that I want to watch. And so, like, it becomes a thing of, where are you going to find time for all of these? Mm-hmm. I already told you two shows, three shows that I want to watch, and the, I'm not done with the list. So, like, I got to make the hard cut. So, Orient is probably out. I may come back around to it and rewatch it, uh, watch the whole thing when it finishes up, especially since it really looks like they're about to catch up to the manga at the end of the season, even though it's a very short uh, anime and the, and the manga is, like, hella long. But they're doing, like, five five chapters an episode, which is insane. So, like, I'll probably, yeah, that's way out of the ordinary. So I'll probably just yeah. go back and watch all 26 episodes, you know, maybe at the end of the year or something like that. So that's cut for now. Uh, Don Machi, that's in, easy in. Uh, I'm season, I'm in season four. Like, it, they'd have to really fuck up for me to drop it. I ain't going nowhere. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, My Isekai Life, I didn't even talk about that. It was just generic bullshit. Fuck it. I'm not watching that. Buchi Gide, um... If I catch Rakeem watching it, he said he's going to watch it. He tends to watch stuff in the living room. If I catch him watching it, I'll come down and watch an episode with him. Otherwise, I'm not going back for it. Engage Fair kids. Enough. Fucking out of there. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, I guess it wasn't Futo engaging PI, enough. <laughs> it definitely was not engaging enough. You are correct. <laughs> Futo PI, like, I liked it. Like, it was kind of surreal to see a tokusatsu yeah. turn into an anime. But I still, I was... 
I was half enjoying myself, half not. Uh, it's a very beautiful anime. I love that. Uh, but the thing was, they kind of made the main character into like a little joke of a character. And like he was always a little bit of a joke in, in Kamen Rider Double, but he was also really cool. And he was the guy that got shit done. And now I'm watching Futo P.I. and he's not the guy that gets shit done. He's the guy that needs help from his, his nerdy ass friend. And I'm a little bummed by that. But I, I, I still want to keep watching because, I mean, like, as Keem said, it's only one episode. So, in fact, not only is it only one episode, the first episode doesn't show him transform at all. Like, it ends, like, there's a, a flashback where he transforms. But if I'm not mistaken, he doesn't fight anybody in, like, the actual storyline. No. He never transforms. Like, the episode ends with them about to transform. So that, like, Keem is right. It's really slow to start. And so, like, I'm excited to check it out. But as we stand right now, I'm like, all right, uh... A little iffy. Oh, yeah. what's up, Keen? I was about to say, it kind of felt like, um, you know, you and Tokusatsu or Sentai, it kind of felt like those those seasons that start off with a two-parter first episode. Yeah, You only got the first half of the two-parter instead of both. <laughs> That's exactly what it kind was. Felt. Like, you would expect them to, like, give you both episodes. Like, in fact, yeah, even if even if it wasn't a direct two... Funny you should say that. Old school Kamen Rider, like, Kamen Rider from that era was all, like, Break broken down in like two parters, like it was just a series mm -hmm. of two parters for years, and it kind of feels like a, a throwback to that era, uh, 09 to like 2015 or so. It feels like a throwback to the era of two parters because this very clearly was not the end of the arc, and it, it seems like there's more story to tell. And we didn't even get to see him transform, like that's the money Weird. shot, so to speak. And we never <laughs> got it, so like I don't know. I'm excited to, I, I want to check out the next episode, but I, I, I hope it lives up to my expectations. But yeah, other than that, like it's it's uh so we have Licorice Recoil, Ruby, Extreme Hearts, Don Machi, and Futo Piazza, five series and all. I probably won't wind up dropping too many of those. I'll probably finish them all. Ruby, if anything gets cut, it'll be that because the other shows I'm just so excited to check out. Uh I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode. So if you enjoyed this episode, I need a few things from you. I need you to do us a favor and hit that subscription button. I need you to follow us on YouTube. I need you to follow us on Twitter and TikTok. I need you to tell your friends about us. And I need you to do me a personal favor and have an excellent week. Peace.